Today we speak with Mike Train about the digital revolution in the oil and gas industry. I am Mashael Kindi and this is Adnoc Insights. Mike, welcome to Adnoc Insights. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you here. It's great to be here. Some say that, that the oil and gas industry has been slow in embracing digital solutions. Do you agree with that? I do not agree with that. I think the oil and gas industry has been forward with uh, embracing digitalization. They've been doing it for 30 years, frankly. You know, as the advent of computing came into the industry and digital control systems came into the industry. So I actually think the oil and gas industry is at the forefront of this. Now, these industries uh, deal with hazardous conditions. Uh, so the, the rate at which we gate these technologies in has to be managed, but I, I think they're at the forefront. So lately there's been a lot of focus on the value of data. Sure. Is data the new oil? Data is important, but only if it gives you insight, and that insight leads to action. So I absolutely think, uh, you know, our oil and gas companies today already have a, a ton of data. Frankly, the, the trick is how do, you, how do you maybe create some aids to sift that data, get to those insights, and then create the actions that you need. Where do you see uh, most value for automation and machine learning solutions in the oil and gas industry? Yeah, so I'd say there's a couple places where those, where those solutions fit. One is around uh, our everyday person working, working in the field, okay? Uh, historically, there was a lot of walk around, um, tabulations, go look at the pressure gauges. All of that now we can augment with, with a sensor with digital capability, which auto, you know, helps maybe automate the workflows and helps free them so then divert and focus on the things that'll make a better ROI in their business. So I think, I think we're seeing a lot of that. I think um, the other thing is a lot of our data historically has been trapped inside of systems, inside the control system. And you know, the people every day trying to do their job weren't thinking that they really needed, had a purpose to take that information and give it to somebody in reliability or finance or quality or safety. So I think getting this, the, the information mobile and moving and maybe from our consumer lives, we have this push kind of technologies now. I think trying to get that information moving directly on a push to people in the organization will actually enhance collaboration in the organization. So there's a lot of different ways that data can play. Uh, are there any particular new technological solutions that you think will have a big impact on our industry? I do. I think there's a couple of things. As you look forward, you know, five years, maybe 10 years, you look forward here. Um, you know, at Emerson, we deal with the sensing, the valves, and, and the control systems and the software. So that whole complete capability to really understand what's going on in your system. So we're, we're innovating around new sensing. Uh, sensing types that you don't necessarily need for the process control, but they give you better business insight. Example is a corrosion, a non-intrusive corrosion sensor that helps make sure your facility stays safe, you know, asset integrity, kind of helps you also manage your chemicals and your costs. So at that micro level, we're doing a lot of work around the sensing. As you go up, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for aggregating data, uh, giving, uh, building the process models. You know, we're going down the road of getting to where we'll have the digital twin of the, the entire facility. We're going to do that with our control systems, I think, specifically because it touches all those parts of the facility. Um, if we get those models right, we get that uh, simulation, I think, my opinion, integrated in the control systems. Then we'll have the opportunity to synchronize it automatically, so as the plant changes, the simulation gets updated. And then people are going to start doing a lot more of their work in the virtual side, testing new algorithms, training their operators, you know, maybe training for ab adverse conditions. But they can do that with a time element, and then when they're satisfied, they can push that back into the physical. So I think that simulation piece of what we're doing is going to be big. But it, to me, it still matters what's going on in the field, in the pipe, just having more insight, more awareness understanding those things. Let's talk about people. Yeah. Why do you think young talent today should still consider the oil and gas industry as the industry of the future? I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you guys are talking about the talent. I think we all need to be talking about talent globally. If you look at the demographics right now of most of the developed world in China, you know, there's a very high retirement activity happening and there's lesser numbers of people coming back into the workforce. So just to stay even, we need to really draw on our, our, our kids, our parents, our teachers, to be directing them towards getting those STEM type of educations and considering how they use those roles as we go forward. So we absolutely need that. You know, the other thing is, is you know, our industry doesn't always tell a story very well. I think we can work on that. 
But if you think about the noble causes that energy touches, you know, we, we, it's transportation, it's, it's, it's your air conditioning, it's the safety of your food, it's medicines, all these different aspects of, of, of daily life. I mean, this, this is a very noble industry. We obviously are going to manage the transition into the future a little bit, but I think we need the best and brightest minds to come be a part of what we're doing. We need to attract them. And I, I think if you really take what we do, I mean, we're combining chemical engineering, software, electronics, mechanicals, it's, it's, it's great stuff. So how ready do you think we are for this transition as an industry? So, you know, I'd say from my perspective, so I'm in the automation space, I talk to everybody, I talk to the governments. Um, I think that we're to a point now where people are extremely sincere and really trying to move forward, make a difference. I think all the energy companies are doing that. I think all the providers are trying to figure out how to do that. I think our academic institutions are trying to do that. So I, th I think we have a great dynamic now where we can be honest with each other. Um, we need practical pathways. You know, right now we can't just like turn off all the fossil fuel energy. We, you know, daily life would be altered and it wouldn't be acceptable for people. So I think we got to find the right transitional paths. I think we need to, we still have some technology gaps. Storage is one that comes up frequently. If you have a, a renewable and an intermittent type of resource, you're going to need, and you want to have a lot of that, you're going to need a storage capability to time shift that uh, capability. We know LNG and gas is, is at least twice as good from a carbon intensity standpoint than oil, uh, or coal, excuse me. I think we're going to see a lot of gas in the intervening 20, 30 years be part of that. I'm still an engineer at heart. I still think nuclear has a role to play. I, I keep advocating for that. I think that's important. We need that baseline to keep the grid stable. So, so there's still a lot of technical solutions, but you know, I trust that they're going to come. But we need to have the safe dialogue. We need to have the, the opportunity to, to lay out practically how we get there and then all work together in concert to make that happen. Mike, thank you for your valuable insights. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. An honor. Thank you.